Welcome to Bible Essentials. My name is Sarah Ruff. We are in the middle of the study of 1 John. Remember, John is writing to those of us who believe in Jesus so that we may know we have eternal life. So if that is interest you, which I hope it does, turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4, and I'm going to begin reading. It says, and I'm going to start, actually, I'm going to start in the last, in chapter 3, verse 24, because it's going to give us the context for where we're going in chapter 4. So chapter 3, verse 24 says, The one who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. We know by this that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he's given us. So he's just talked about the Spirit whom he's given us. Then we get to chapter 4, verse 1. Remember, there's no breaks in the original text, so this text would just continue on. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Listen, from last week, if you remember that we are either a a child of the devil, either the devil is our father or God is our father. We are either walking, Paul tells us we're either being controlled by the evil that dwells in us or we're controlled by the Holy Spirit in us. And so John is saying to these, to, to how do you know? We test the spirits in people to know which spirit are we dealing with, the spirit of evil or a, the Holy Spirit. And so uh, verse 2 says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming and now is already in the world. This is the second time John has told the readers that he was writing this letter to. He says, you know the Antichrist is coming. You have heard it. And the Antichrist, his spirit is already here. And it's those people who are saying that Christ did not come in the flesh. Verse 4, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them, these false prophets, this false teaching. You have overcome them. Why? How? Because greater is he who is in you, the Holy Spirit, if it's in you, you have the Holy Spirit. It is greater than he that is in the world. Think about that anything in this world, if you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you, you are greater. What's in you is greater than what is in the world. You can be victorious. You can be victorious. Verse 5, they are from the world, these false prophets. Therefore, they speak as from the world. And listen, the world listens to them. The world loves the world. Remember last week, we're not to love the world or anything in the world because God has called us out of the world. Um, Verse 6, we are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know, John is saying, by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Because this is how we know when you talk to someone, what are they teaching? And remember the context of this back in the days of John. Remember the Jews as a whole, as a nation, believed in God, but they did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And then they would persecute those who did believe in the Messiah. In fact, that's exactly what Paul was doing. He was persecuting those Jews who had turned and started believing that Jesus was the Messiah. And so this is the context here. Um, you've got to confess that Jesus is from God. That is the spirit of truth. And those who do not confess that is the spirit of error. Let me read you a couple verses on having the spirit of truth. John 14, 6. 
16 through 18. It says this, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. So he says he's going to give you a helper and he's going to be with you forever. He's not going to leave you. That is, and what is that? What's the helper that he's going to be with you forever? That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you, which is Jesus. He was abiding with them at the moment and will be in you, will be in you because remember the Holy Spirit did not come upon them um, until after Christ had died and, and was resurrected. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Do you see how those with the Spirit can know truth, cannot be deceived, can see through the deception? And those who don't have the Spirit, they just don't see it. They can't see the lies. They can't see the deception. Um, one more verse, John 16, 12. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. So the spirit of truth, the spirit we get is the spirit of truth. And how we need truth in this day and age. How we need truth in our churches. Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. This is why you're to love one another, because God gives us His love. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Remember, if we have the Spirit of God in us, one of the fruits will be love that we will produce. So beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God, and God knows and knows God. Okay, I want to read to you some verses on being born of God. What does that mean to be born of God? He says, Love is from God, and everyone who loves, who has love, is born of God and knows God. Turn with me to John chapter 3, verse 1. Remember, John writes this letter, this, these 1st, first, first, second, and John letters based off of the gospel of John, in which John learned from Jesus himself. I want to read this to you. It's so important. Pause what you're doing. It says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John, God. Jesus just taught Nicodemus. He said, hey, unless you are born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus responds and says, says to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Listen to how Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, born of the woman, born of woman, and the Spirit, born of the woman and born of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you've got to, of course, first be birthed into this world. Then God has got to birth you and give you his Holy Spirit before you can even enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, let me read this again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. Listen, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. 
but do not know where it comes from and where it is going, so everyone who is born of the Spirit. We feel it, but we don't know where it comes or where it goes. That is how someone is born of the Spirit. Now, let's talk about this just a moment. Is it your will, your free will, that you are given the Spirit of God that you're born of Him? Can you do that? When you are born of the flesh of your mother, do you have any say in that? Is it your will? Do you desire it? Is there anything you can do? There is nothing. And I'm going to tell you this. There is nothing that you can do. God alone has to birth you, literally birth you again, and give His Spirit to you before you can even see the kingdom of God, before you can even enter it. He must fill you with His Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to chapter 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. John is just confirming that these false prophets are literally false prophets. They do not know what they are doing. They do not know what they are saying. John is saying, I know. We've testified. This is how we know love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him, through the Holy Spirit he gives us. Verse 10, in this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Don't miss it. We can only love because God loved us and put His Holy Spirit in us. And remember, one of the fruits of the Spirit is love. We can't love before He loved us. Remember, before He puts His Spirit in us, before we are born of the Spirit, we have to be born of the Spirit to even see the kingdom or enter the kingdom of God. There is an order. There is an order to this. It says, verse 9, uh, verse 10, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins, to satisfy an angry God. That's what it means, to satisfy an angry God because of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Again, If God so loved us that He gave us His Son to die for us and He has filled us with His Spirit, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. So these people who say they have these heavenly experiences and see God, uh, that doesn't stand true with Scripture. It says no one, verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. If, though, if we love one another, God abides in us, He remains in us, He stays in us, and His love is perfected in us, completed in us. So mind you, we haven't seen Him with our eyes, but if if we're filled with the Spirit, then He literally lives in us which Jesus said was even better. He said, it's good that I go so that I can send the helper to you, the Holy Spirit that can help you. Um, By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. This is how we know that we know. For those of us who believe in Jesus, we know that we know we have eternal life by the Spirit He has given us to enable us to walk in the light and obey His commands and love one another. Verse 14, We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. John is confirming we have seen it, and now we're testifying to what we see, that yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and God abides in Him and He in God. Verse 16, 
We have come to know and believe the love which God has for us. We have known, we've experienced, we know the love which God has for us. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Verse 17, by this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. I'm going to finish. I'm going to read one more verse. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfect in love. What is John telling us here? Well, number one, I want to show you that in chapter 3, verse 2, last week we read, Beloved, now we are children of God. We are children of God in this world, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be, until uh, uh, what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. So in chapter 3, verse 2, we are told we're not like him and we'll be like him when he appears. But here he's saying we are like him. Well, what's the context of the two? Well, in John chapter 3, verse 2, the context is we won't be in our full glory. Like we will not have the glory of Christ. We won't be like him in that way until he appears and we enter into our glorified bodies. In 1 John 4 down here, the context is love. Love and this judgment. And the context is, remember God has said over and over again, if God is in us and we are in him. We will love our brothers. And if so, the love of God is perfected in us. So he said many, because of this, because God's love is perfected in us and we love others, we can have confidence in the day of judgment. Why? Because judgment is is associated with punishment, involves punishment. But if you know through the spirit God's given you and you're loving others, you can have confirmation on that day of judgment because there's no punishment for us who are living by the spirit, living in Christ, who Christ has forgiven our sins. There's one little tiny hiccup here is because most of the people in the church today don't even believe that they will be, that there will be a day of judgment. But notice John includes himself in this day of judgment. He said, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. I would encourage you to do my revelation study because you will know that all, all, Saved, unsaved will be at that great white throne judgment. And listen, if you have the Holy Spirit in you that is leading you, and if you have love for one another, you can rest assured there is, you can have confidence in that day and you can have no fear of that day. But what John is saying is if you do fear that day of judgment, then the love of God has not been perfected in you. You don't truly have the peace, the love that God gives when he fills you with his, with his Holy Spirit. Do you see what John is saying? If you are fearing the day of judgment, God is not living within you. The Holy Spirit is not in you. You aren't loving. You are walking in darkness. You're not walking in the light. That's what he's saying. Verse 19, we love because he first loved us. Again, he must love us first. He must fill us with his Holy Spirit for us to love. Don't miss that. Verse 20, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, 
He is a liar. The one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. Wow, what a word for us today. Do we love? Do we fear this day of judgment coming? We shouldn't if we're filled with the Holy Spirit. If we are loving others as Christ loved us, there is no fear in judgment because judgment involves punishment and there's no punishment for those who are living in Christ. When we get to that great white throne judgment, Jesus will say, I died for her. She is forgiven. She is just before me. Something to pray over, to think about. Oh my goodness, you all, it is freezing. I am in this big old gray sweater because it is absolutely freezing here in Northwest Arkansas. I think it's like 12 degrees. And in this YouTube room, it's about 20 degrees because I can't have the air blowing with my mic. So I am going to cut this off short. I think I'm turning a little purple in here. But what an exciting study. Listen, we're not told this enough. We're not told it. I don't think we're taught it. But listen, you can believe in Jesus and not be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think we know people like that. I lived my life like that. The first 20 years of my life that I thought I was truly saved. I believed in God and Jesus with all my heart. I knew I was a sinner. I prayed. I was in church and I truly thought I was saved. But after reading Romans, after reading um, reading and really digging into Scripture, I realized I was not filled with the Holy Spirit then. It wasn't till age 28 when God filled me with His Holy Spirit that my life then began to change. I was literally born again. I literally put away the old self and put on the new. I still have a lot to go. Trust me, the Lord still has a long way to go with me, but I am not the same person I was from when I was 28. And that needs to be the question you ask yourself. Are you different? Since believing with all your heart in Jesus Christ as your Savior, are you walking in darkness or are you walking in light? Are you loving or are you not? Are you obeying God's Word or are you not? That's how you know whether you will have eternal life or not. All right, next week we're going to finish this up with chapter five. I can't wait. I'll see you then.